of students, today's agenda is to return to your test for Unit 4. Uh, we're going to be learning about systems of linear equations, and your homework is going to be 5.1. Today's students will be able to write two equations from a scenario. Scenario. Sorry about that. To set up a system of linear equations. Okay, so today's goal is just write the equations. Later on, we're going to be solving them, but not today. Okay, so hopefully this doesn't get you distracted. But let's look at this first word problem. Um, imagine that you bought sodas for $1 and candy bars for $2. If you spent... $12, what can you buy? What if I told you that you bought eight items? Okay. Um, so, before we have, uh, we, we start writing our equations, I just want to say that these are going to steps that we're going to be taking. So, you might want to pause it and take a minute to write them. Um, or just write as, as I read it. So the first thing that we're going to do is read the problem, which we did already. Then we have to underline keywords. And so in here you can see that I underline sodas for $1, candy bars for $2, so you spend $12, and you bought eight items. Um, the third is what is the unknown values to be able to see what are the unknown values what is going to be represented with variables um, then we're going to write the equations and that's how far we're going to get today but later throughout this unit unit five we're going to be solving equations okay today only write the equations Okay, so now that you have that, we already underlined the keywords. What is the unknown values? Do we know how much is how much are the sodas? Yes. Do we know how much are candy bars? Yes. Do we know how much we spent? Yes. So what is it that we don't know? What can you buy? So we don't know. We know that in total we bought eight items, but we don't know how many sodas and how many candy bars. And so the number of sodas that we buy is going to be represented with any variable that you want. So in this case, you might want to say either X and Y, or you might want to use the initial, but you have to be careful of not getting confused with, with the five, the number five. So maybe make a fancy s for sodas and for the candy bar it might be a c and we know that the number of sodas together with the number of candy bars is a total of eight items so we're going to add s a fancy s plus c meaning the number of candy bars that i bought is a total of eight items Okay, then we know that each soda costs $1. So when we multiply, I don't know, whatever number of sodas we bought times $1, right? And I'm just going to put the dollar sign there to make the connections, plus my number of candy bars multiply times $2, that gives me the total cost of the $12. So I want you to make this connection. We have here number of items of each one equals to the total number of items. Um, price for each one times the number of items is equals to the total price that I'm gonna be paying for the candies and the sodas. So basically, that will be what your your goal for today. Just create those two equations. Very important. Don't put 1s plus 2c equals 8. 
because this is talking about money and this is talking about the number of items you bought. And don't put S plus C equals 12 because this is telling me how many sodas I bought, how many candy bars I bought, and that's not the same as $12. It's telling me how many. So that's a total of eight, okay? Let's look at another example. It says, you have 15 paper bills. You have $1 and $5 bills. You have a total of $55. <clears throat> Again, in this case, um, unless you want to say for $1 bills, an O, which might be confusing with a zero. Maybe you want to make it a little tall, I guess, for the letter O of one. And F for letter, for letter F of five, okay? Um, so you just have to be careful that you know that this means O, okay? Or you might wanna use X and Y instead. So my, my O represents the number of bills that are of $1. So the number of bills that are of $1 bills, basically, plus the number of $5 bills, again, this represents the number of $5 bills, is equals to, what would you put in here? $55 or $15? Notice I skipped underlining, right? So, hello, $1 and $5 bills. If we're talking about money, that will go with the total money, right? And we're ta if we're talking about the bills, that will be the total number of paper bills you have. So, O plus F is equals to 15, right? Because this is the number number of number of one dollar bills, and this is the number of five dollar bills okay so this is the number of the bills so this is the number of the bills all together now how much are one dollar bills the value is one dollar notice how i'm putting the one dollar sign in here next to wow that's gonna be confusing <laughs> Okay, so you might want to change again, okay? I don't know, put maybe like a little, like when you're doing cursive writing, okay? Um, so one times the number of $1 bills plus five times the number of five dollar bills is equals to dollar sign so that means that it goes with the dollar sign 55 dollars okay and it just means that if i have five i would then multiply by five and that will give me 25 which is not okay we're, we're not sure we're going to learn how to find that value but again this means that i'm multiplying the number of bills that i have times the value of uh, five dollar bills Okay, hopefully that's not so confusing <laughs> Especially now with the using of, of this variable that look like a zero Okay, it's a O Okay One more example in here and that way you can have some more chance to look at <laughs> At the guidelines and also I don't forget to follow them as well so the first thing is to read the problem you have 10 coins in nickels and pennies you have 30 cents underline keywords so I have a total of 10 coins I have nickels and pennies and I have a total of 30 cents. 
So first of all, we need to know the value of the different coins in here. And I'm gonna put a list in here of all, not all the coins, but the ones that we're gonna be using through this unit. And so pennies are worth one cent, which is also written in decimal form as 0 0.01. Then we have nickels, which are five cents. And in decimal form, they're written as 0 0.05. Don't get it confused with 0 0.5, because that's 50 cents. Then we have dimes. Those are 10 cents, which are also written as 0 0.10. And the last one that we're going to be using is quarters, which are 25 cents. And so that will be represented in decimal form as 0 0.25. Okay, so what information do I have? What is it that I don't know the value of? Well, I know that I have, I know how many total coins I have and the total money I have and I know that I have nickels and pennies I know the values of nickels because I'm giving it to you right here so you know that and you also know the value of pennies but I don't know how many I have of each one and again today we're not going to figure that out but at least I'm going to set up the equation so that I can later on figure that out okay so my nickels how many nickels do I have? I don't know, but I'm gonna represent that with N. How many pennies do I have? Again, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna represent that with a P. And now I can use that information to write my equations. So the number of nickels plus the number of pennies is gonna be a total of, how many coins do I have in total? 10. Not 30 cents, because it's not talking about, this is not representing the value of the coins, right? Now, to figure out how much I have in nickels, I would have to multiply my value of one nickel, which is 0 0.5 times N. So look how this goes hand in hand. Plus, the pennies are worth 0 0.01 um, and so I multiply that by the number of pennies that I have. Notice how this is talking about money, this represents money, so I'm going to put it together with money, right? So I'm going to put um, in here 0 0.30 cents and I know that this um, is an easy one, you can possibly figure it out mentally. But for now, we're just going to set up the equation. One little thing that I want to say that you know how in here there are two different ways to represent this. In dollars or in cents. If you want to avoid working with decimals later on once we're solving the system of equations, I recommend that this be written with this numbers instead of decimals we can use whole numbers to represent it with cents so it would be the same thing to say 5n meaning 5 cents times the number of nickels 1 cent instead of 0 0.01 of a dollar multiplied by the number of pennies i have is equals to instead of 0.30 of a dollar i would say 30 cents Okay, so these two equations are exactly the same. They represent the same thing. And you can just work with these two um, for the system of equations instead. And once we start solving them, um, we'll go back to this and it will make more sense. Okay. Okay, the next one. And I'm going to follow the guidelines even if I'm not, I don't have them right here. Well, I have them right here, but <laughs> you can't see them. So first we're going to read the problem. I guess I can put them. Read the problem. So you spend $24 on rice. 
the low quality rice cost two dollars and high quality rice cost three dollars you buy a total of 10 pounds so the next thing is to underline keywords on the first sentence you spend 25 dollars on rice so spend 24 dollars the low quality low quality rice costs two dollars and the high quality rice costs three dollars you buy a total of 10 pounds that's also total of 10 pounds so how would i write and what is it that i don't know in here actually i know the cost of each type of rice i know how much i buy in total of in pounds and i know how much i pay in total but i don't know how much i buy of each type of rice how many pounds of each one so those will be my variables right and i guess low quality i could represent it with l high quality i could represent it with an h and now i can start writing my equations okay okay so i know that the number of pounds of low quality plus the number of pounds of high quality is equals to what 10 pounds okay so the number of low quality pounds plus the number of a high quality pounds of rice is equals to 10 pounds i would not want to put 24 dollars in here because that's the total price i pay for for them but in here i'm talking about the number of pounds of one number of pounds of the other to apply the 24 dollars this is talking about money, so I'm going to definitely attach the price of each one for the high quality and the low quality. Okay, and so how much is the high quality? $3. How much is the low quality? $2. Notice again how money plus money equals money, but number of pounds plus number of pounds equals the total number of pounds okay so again today was just set up the equations um i hope this video was helpful and now you can work on 5.1